and welcome to the BNP Game of the Week featuring the Met Pirates and the Great Neck North Blazers. I'm Tom Morrow alongside Sean McQuillan and Tyler Steinberg who will be joining us later in the broadcast. Last time these two teams met, it was the third game of the season for both teams and the Pirates won in three sets. One month later, Met is currently sitting in second while the Blazers have their struggles this year and find themselves at the bottom of the standings in Conference AC3. It's going to be a good one today. Yeah, Tom, definitely agree with you. Mepham has clinched their playoff spot as the second place team. Unfortunately, they couldn't get first place this year due to the strong and undefeated team in the Valley Street North Spartans. But Mepham's going to look to win on their senior night against the 1-9 Great Neck North Blazers. Sean, you mentioned a little bit right there. You know, it's not only a pivotal game for the Nassau AC3, uh, you know, standings for Mepham with, uh, you know, Valley Stream. It's also senior night here. And, you know, before Great Neck North came here, you know, uh, the coaches introduced uh, the seniors and, you know, went straight to that. So we're going to go ahead and roll that now. Welcome, families and friends, uh, to our 2021 Mepham Volleyball Senior Night. In a few moments, we will be honoring our three seniors. But prior to that, we wanted to thank the administration, athletic director, scorer's table, athletic trainer Alexa, the custodial staff, and all of the supporters who have helped the program throughout the season. Also, a special thanks to the Belmore Merrick Broadcasting Team who provide professional coverage of all our teams here at Mepham. The girls have worked and have overcome a lot of challenges this season. These trying times has made us stronger as we prepare for a successful postseason run. Good luck to the girls in the playoffs. And now for our Lady Pirates seniors. This senior has played four years in the volleyball program, two on JV and two on varsity. She also has played four years on the varsity basketball team, earning an all-conference award in 2020. She comes to every game and practice with a great attitude, willing to help the team in any way she can. She will be deciding on SUNY Oneonta, SUNY New Paltz next season. We ask that Mr. and Mrs. Clark please join team captain number 18, Riley Clark. Riley. You want to make center court? Center court. played two years on JV and two years on varsity volleyball. She has also played four years on the basketball team and five years on the varsity softball team, where she is the reigning Nassau County Player of the Year. She is, whoa. She is a part of the school ambassador program, a LEO club member, student government representative, and part of the leadership program. On the volleyball court, she is currently in top 25 in Nassau County with 21 blocks and has 31 aces as well. She will be continuing her softball career next year at Division I Hofstra University. We ask that Mr. and Mrs. Morris, her brother Danny, her sister Anastasia, please join team captain number 16, Alana Morris. Our final senior has played two years on JV and two years on the varsity volleyball team. Last season she earned an all-county honorable mention award. This season, she ranks third in Nassau County and fourth in all of Long Island with 59 blocks and 53 kills. She is a member of the National Honor Society, the National English Honor Society, the National Spanish Honor Society, and the National Art Honor Society. Next year, she wishes to attend Farmingdale State College in the Dental Hygienist Program, where she hopes to continue her volleyball career. She is a leader who will do anything for this volleyball team. Will her mom, Rosemary, and her sister, Kayla, please join team captain number 11, Lauren Barkwin. Save 
To our seniors, on behalf of myself, Coach Tom and Coach Nicole, thank you for your dedication and commitment to the program. Good luck to the three of you in the future. We ask now that if we can get a picture of all the families out at center court. Congratulations and enjoy the game. Tom, do you want me to announce that they will be arriving shortly? Yeah. Do you want me to arrive that they will be arriving shortly? Or just like no, that? Just Hello, everybody, and welcome back. As uh, you guys just saw, the senior night here at Mepham High School. So we're coming back into the broadcast booth. Myself and Sean are joined by uh, Mepham volleyball players, uh, freshman Michaela Dobby. So, Michaela, you know, what has it been like this season, you know, um, just being on, you know, being with the team as a freshman and, you know, living out the atmosphere and, you know, you guys are making a push towards the playoffs. What's that, what's that feel like? You know, it's amazing, Tom. I'm really excited. It's been such a fun season. I've always loved playing volleyball, and it's just an opportunity to play more with such inspiring teammates. It's a lot of fun, and we are going to go hard. We're going to try to get to playoffs. We It looks like we've already got a spot and clinched a spot in playoffs, and we're just really excited to see how far we can go. Great, Michaela. So, freshman setter, and you are in the starting lineup of freshman year. How do you feel about that? You know, it's been such an amazing opportunity to be able to play. It's one of my first times being a setter, and I, ob I absolutely love it. You know, being a setter, you have so much control of the court, and I mean, in basketball, I'm the point guard, and I just love having that control and being able to lead my team to success. It's just an amazing chance that I've had. So, Michaela, you know, you get back um, into that little phase there. You know, you were a starter, and you know, now you're out with an injury. You want to explain that a little bit? Yeah, you know, I'm not really sure what happened. Um, I sprained my wrist. Um, I should be back come next week for our plain edge game, and that's a pretty big game. So I'm just excited to get back in there. It's been a little tough being out, just watching, but I think I'll be come back better. So I'm really excited. So, uh, Michaela, Mepham has clinched a playoff spot, as you just said. What are you guys going to have to do in order to advance in the playoffs if you think you have a shot at advancing the playoffs at all? You know, I think the biggest thing that we have to work on is just our communication as a team, just knowing who's going to get that ball. If the setter takes the first ball, just knowing exactly where the Rivera is going to put it up. And we just need to work hard to get all of our passes amazing to setter and to setter to put the ball up even better to our hitters so that they can really powerful, have really powerful swings. Michaela, you know, um, you know, you mentioned a big game against Plain Edge next week. You know, how, you know, how pivotal is this game today, you know, for the conference wise? You know, I know you guys have been going back and forth. You've been looking at, you know, Nassau County, you know, the standings and everything. You've been going back and forth with Valley Stream, Plain Edge, and you guys are locked in at the number two right now and have an opportunity to bump up to one these next couple of games, you know, if you guys take the win. You know, how pivotal is this game today and even to the future? You know, this, every game is a big game. Every game is an opportunity to prove how good we are and how amazing we play as a team. And we go into every game knowing that we are very good and we just want to prove that we should be that number one team in this division. So, Michaela, like we brought up earlier as well, you are a starting center now with junior Madison Weber as well. Can you tell us what you've learned so far from Madison, someone maybe as a mentor? I've just learned how to be a good leader on the court, and if I know that if I'm not going to take that second ball, I know that I need to communicate really well to my teammates to know that someone else will take that ball. So, Michaela, you know, uh, I mentioned earlier in the interview, you know, you're a freshman. You've got three more years in this program. How do you think that benefits you and, 
you know, what do you think your experience level is going to be going forward with Coach Wildeman and every, 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 you know, younger, younger player on this team? You know, I definitely think that this year has been incredible. I came in, I learned to be a setter, and I feel like this was definitely a learning year for me. I feel like I've progressed so much from the start of this season, and I'm just really excited to see what the next few years hold as I keep getting better as a setter, and I plan to work on it a bunch in the off season, and I think I'm definitely going to be ready for next year. Absolutely, Michaela. And so, obviously, you can't play today, and I've heard from your coach you're doing lines today. It must be fun. What do you think your keys to the game are for you guys today? I think the keys to the game are just to make sure that we put out our best foot on the court because I know that if we do that, there's no team that can beat us because we, when we play together, we play incredible. We can do everything. And I just think we just have to play like we play and we can't play down to competition. We need to go up and succeed. Michaela, you know, before we wrap it up, I'm going to ask you one more question. And, you know, I always get the answer. I ask every athlete this question. What's your goal in the postseason? Everyone says, you know, win the championship. But a more, like, formal answer, you know, what do you think, like, this team, you know, really could benefit in the postseason? I think, as you said, many athletes say that we can go as far as we can go. When our team plays together, we just have this amazing camaraderie. And we can, I feel that we can achieve anything when we play to our level of volleyball. I think we can go very, very, very far in these playoff games. Perfect. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you, Tom. No problem. So, Sean, good words there from uh, freshman Michaela Dobby for the Men Pirates. She's going to be out this game, unfortunately, but uh, coming into the postseason, she'll, she'll definitely be a key factor for them. Oh, absolutely. Hey, one setter's always better than two. And one setter's always better than two. Like I just said, you have two setters. Give us one some time to rest in case one's exhausted in a way. But today, Madison Weber gets the keys to the kingdom, as I call it. She's the floor general, the quarterback, if you call it, on the court today. So we're going to see how she does by herself running a 5-1. Five, five hitters and herself. That's right. You know, standing at number two in the conference, as we mentioned to her in earlier throughout the broadcast, they're 8-2 and two, uh, overall. They're 8-2. and two. As uh, we take a look at Great Neck North, they're one and nine. You know, um, Great Neck North, they're a young team. They're rebuilding this year. They lost eight seniors. It's going to be, you know, it's a rough season for them. Absolutely, Tom. Eight seniors last year means leadership goes from top all the way to bottom. It's a little rough to deal with. But, hey, Great Neck North, one and nine. Honestly, Coach Nashry should be proud that a team, even rebuilding, is competing within these teams. And we're going to see if they can compete with the Pirates today. Take a look at Memphis' last game. They they uh, swept the sweat. They swept the set three nothing versus versus Beth Page. You know they have been on point. They've been just balling out, just going out there and putting out all their all their all that they can. Agreed, Tom. And looking at the Blazers of Great Neck North, they met Valley Stream North, the conference champions, and unfortunately got three would as Mepham almost came down to that same defeat. But Mepham did get a set in a very close game. Fans were hyped. That was BNB's last coverage of the girls' volleyball game, where you can find them on the BNB YouTube channel. Yeah, Sean, I was actually commentating that game, and that game is, you know, it was crazy. You know, Met was down two nothing. They come back, they take the third set, and you know, they just they just lost it in that fourth one. But we're getting started here as uh, Met and the Blazers are heading on to the court. Gonna get ready for some action. So, Sean, you know, what do you think? Uh, what do you think it's like for these? A lot of, you know, all all three seniors from Metham starting tonight. Definitely, you know, definitely a, a good feel tonight. It's very exciting. I can tell. All before the game started and the warmups, we had the senior ceremony. All three seniors were introduced with their families as well as they all took center court. Very special moment for the seniors. As it's senior night at Mepham in the past three years, I believe, for the girls, have gotten three and all on senior night. And especially last year on senior night was a one of the best games the Mepham Girls Volleyball Program has ever had. Three owing. And let's see if they can do that again today. Yeah, that was a game against Hewlett. You know, it was a big game there. You could find that on the BNB YouTube page. Only be a year ago. Only a year ago. Uh, yeah. Not even. Yeah, man. Well, it, it might have half a year. Because yeah, uh, the three March. compressed seasons, yeah. COVID. So here we go. We're going to get started here. Linda Lee, the captain of this Blazers team, serves this one away. O'Sullivan's there. 
Weber, O'Sullivan, nice volley there. Lee, and that goes over by Rios. Weber, O'Sullivan, that one goes out. Blazers will get the first point of the night of the first set. Emily O'Sullivan almost hitting our principal, Mr. Gomez at the doorway. Emily O'Sullivan's got that power. Lee, O'Sullivan, Weber. Back to O'Sullivan, she's got it. An unplayable hit there from O'Sullivan. Emily O'Sullivan, top 20 in the kills in all of Nassau County. Has 112 kills on the season, and that's 113 right there. 1-1 one, one game now as Victoria Condulis comes in. Best servers on this team, Condulis. As that falls short right in front of Claire Kamalia, captain on this team, outside hitter. Victoria Condulis, not in the libero jersey today, actually, now is one of the permanent hitters and defensive specialists. As that one goes over, just snuck over, as it's 3-1 now, Mepham. Condulis getting on the streak, feeling herself today. One of the better servers, like you said earlier, on this team. And is currently top 15 for digs in the county. As that goes up, Lee. That goes over by Chance. Mepham trying to save it. Nice job by Rikes. Good volley there, Clark. Weber. Clark gets that over. And Riley's the first senior of the day to get a kill out of all the seniors. Good job by Clark, you know, doing 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 the front, doing the work up front. You know, you see that big line up front, Clark, Borkwin, Rikos. Lee. It's a good set. And there, there gets met another one. Chance got denied at the net. So make it five to one. Didn't get it the hand up in time. Was gonna look for a tip, but Madison Weber was covering anyways. Would have been a hard time there. There goes Metten. Lee. Chance. Gets denied once again. The hand Six has to, to be one. there earlier. If she doesn't get her hand up earlier, then that's gonna go into the net every time. She has to get her approach very quickly. Absolutely. Kandulis on a streak. That goes up. Bump over. Morse, Weber, lays it over. Going for the right Rios. side now. Gets an eye, that's, that goes out. <laughs> nice one there, Tom. Um, like right, Riley in. had good form there, good blocking form, but just landed right outside of the antenna. Six to two now, here comes serve, Rios. That one goes back. And Ulis, that got to go, to, that got to go over, it does. Rios. Great, neck north in system. Right over, that's gonna be a double hit. Double hit from the Blazers. The Blazers have to start finding their way of system right now. They look out of system right now and are not functioning well at all in the slightest. Seven to two, Mepham here in the first set. Here comes Borkman. Serve, nice job there. Lee. That's short of the net is Claire Kamali. Claire Kamali, one of the captains of the team, one of the hardest workers for the Blazers. Funny to say, you know, I said this team's very young, and it's true, Sean. You know, they only got one senior on this team, and that's one of their captains. Otherwise, you know, this team's full of juniors and sophomores, and even freshmen, as a lot of more slams that one over. Good play by the Blazers to Bagel. the middle. Rikos. Morris hits it over. Lee. That goes over. Nice job there. Kamali. Nice job there. Might be a lost play, Lee. It's got to go over. And ooh. it does. Morris to Weber. Clark. Give it to the hot hand, Riley Clark. Nice job there by the Pirates. Good volley and, you know, great momentum. Exactly. Great defense. And as you can see on our screen right now, the top three of Mepham's players currently who lead in Nassau County categories. Sophia Green, top 30 aces. Emily O'Sullivan, top 15 in kills. While Victoria Condolis is top 15 in digs. Metton gets another one. As you can make it 10 to two. Now an eight point lead for the Pirates. 10 to two, Metham right now. You can tell the communication is up and Pirates want to win bad. Comes Borkwin, that serve is short of the net and that'll go to Great Nick. So it's 10 to three. Now we can see that the Blazers can start a rally up. Currently down 10 to three like you just said, Tom. And here comes the serve from Bagum. Duelist. 
Over by Rykos, nobody's there. Great, perfect spot there. That was a great oh, setup by Kondoulis as well. One big reason why Kondoulis is the libero, but perfect. today is not the libero. Perfect as spot on the court, you know, nobody's there and able to find the spot. Agreed, Victoria Kondoulis playing the defensive specialist today as she is one of the best defensive specialists and liberos in the county. Comes to serve. Rios, over by Lee. Weber, lays it right over. Lee, chance. Good take by Borkwin. Moore tries to go over, gets denied at the net. Good set, good form, just gotta get it on her right hand instead of over the shoulder. Otherwise, that's gonna be a cross in the net every time. So it's 11 to four now. Here comes the serve. Weber, Kondoulis. Kondoulis going to hit, you rarely see that one. Nice set there, Weber, Clark, Lee's got it. Morse, nice job there, saving it. Goes back, gets denied. Morse and Weber have to start communicating a little better. It's two plays in a row, two kills in the net. Ashley Emmons out is there at the net for the Blazers. As you saw there, nice job there. Good play by Mepham too. There comes the serve, a nice job there by Chance. Clark. Give it to the hot hand like we've just said. Riley Clark's got her third kill of the game. Julia Hyman unable to play that one. Has that win right off her. Now it's 12 to five, Mepham. Emily O'Sullivan coming back in for the front row for Victoria Condolis, the defensive specialist. Now Mepham's got a strong two hitter combo in the front. Dangerous duo. Comes Clark. Nice play by the Blazers, Sophia Green saving it. Remember that goes over by Morse. Morse with a smart play. Absolutely. Kamali. Kamali. Weber. O'Sullivan. Slams the hammer down. The Quick refs are gonna call four. out. That looked close from here, Sean. Let's check our replay on that. That was Clark's hit. Not Emily said, look, but. Look, look close from here. It was a little close. Sky high. Clark with a nice receive. Molly. O'Sullivan's just going to lay that one over. Lee's there. Giving it to the libero. Ian Kelman. As that's going to be four hits, not a. One thing you much. can never do as a setter in Kaiman, you can never give a third ball to the libero. It's almost like you're just giving the team another point. 13 to 6 now. Metton leads. As here comes the serve from Morse. Morse with a nice float. Kalman, Lee. Nice save there from the Pirates. As that's Sophia Green. Hellman. And they're going to go double touch on that. Metman's going to get the point, so it's 14-6 now. Kaiman's got to plant her feet. If she cannot plant her feet, it's going to be a double touch every single time she sets the ball. As the Pirates are trying to run away here in the first set. Nice job there. Lee's going to go over. As that goes too far out of bounds. So it'll be 15 to 6. Yeah, the Blazers are getting way on top of that ball. Excuse me, way on the bottom of that ball, which is why it's either going out or into the net. Here comes Morse to serve again. Hellman gets denied at the net by and Borkwin. And Warren Borkwin! Warren Borkwin already. Top three in blocks in the county. Third with 59. Just made Borkwood it 60. Borkwood at the net denying Mia Rios. Reaches the 60. An excellent job by Mepham there. There it goes. There's Hellman. She goes straight over. Front row setter. Weber to Borkwin. Nice job, Hellman there. Rios goes back. Nice play nice by, by Borkwin. Borkwin. The double jump. Borkwin a monster at the net right now. When Laura Borkwin and Emily O'Sullivan are in the front row, it might be the most dangerous front row in the whole conference. Absolutely, Sean. Here comes Morse. Beautiful serve. Mia Rios. Helms and they're right going to call there. another double touch. And make it 19 to 6. Like I just said, if you don't plant your feet, it will be a double touch call, unfortunately. Or 18-6, that's my apologies. Junior right side header Angelina Hassel is going to step in for Emily O'Sullivan to give her a breather. Here comes a lot of more, sort of another serve. Here comes the serve. 
as that one heads out of bounds. Alana's got her first ace of the day, and Coach Nashley's going to call a timeout. Kaiman wasn't able to set, get that one, so it's 19-6 to six now with a one-minute timeout. Sean, a rough match so far for Great Neck. Absolutely, and like we said before the game, it is a rebuilding team. One senior, that's it. And captains for the Blazers, Kamali, Lee, and Segovia, have to all start communicating. It's like there's you can drop a pin on that side, and you can hear it. They have to start communicating because Mepham is twice as loud as they are. And that is a big explanation for why the score is 19 to 6. And the Pirates are leading by 13 in the first set. You know, a big, a big performance there from Mepham Pirates. And, you know, a great coaching job there from Coach Wildeman, too. Absolutely. And as you can see on the replay, Mepham's just pumped up. Mepham came here ready to play senior night. And Mepham wants to win it for their three seniors in their last home game here at the home of the Pirates. Absolutely, Sean, and you know, even even you know, this game for the standings. You know, uh, Great Neck's in the conference, and you know, it's it's an even bigger game for that as well. Oh, absolutely, Great Neck North, obviously, can't make the playoffs, but there's always something to prove. Here comes Morris, ready to serve, as uh, six points away from taking the first set. Morris, that's this one. That one goes far. Tuesday, that goes over by Rios. Weber. Just short of the net. That'll be great next point. Weber is thinking correctly, but her placement is not there. 19. That one hand tip could get covered up any second. 19 7 now, and here comes the serve. Hyman, Clark, goes over. Good placement by Weber. Kyman, is that short of the net? Like you just said, Tom, short of the net. Rachel Bagham is crossing her shoulders, and when you cross your shoulders, it either goes in the net or it goes right down to the floor and not over the net, under the net. Weber's serve. And Weber's got an ace with a beautiful float serve. That ball did not move at all. Julia Hyman unsuccessful on the attempt to hit that one up. Is that one straight down? So it's 21 to 7. One of Coach Tom Wildeman's keys to the game was serving, and almost every serve has gone over except one. Here comes Weber's serve. That's hit up by Lee. Watch the tip. And Borkwin's got 61. Monster at the net, Warren Borkwin committed to Farmingdale State for girls volleyball, and that's block 61. Got the counter going here, Sean. I do. <laughs> I mean, that's got to go over. Can't give does. that to the libero. They're going to set it up quick. Weber. Borkwin. Right over. 23-7. to seven. Warren Borkwin is feasting in this first set. He's carrying this first set for Mepham up front. And as you can see, Casey McGovern going crazy in the front row for that one. Comes. Come in. That goes over by Lee. Clark. Great save from Weber, though, and Riley Clark. Just couldn't finish it. There goes as, the end of the serving streak. Yep, as it's 23 to 8 now, is Lee's going to come in and, in and serve. As that one. Schnatz also in. comes in for Kaiman as well. That's laid over, and Metman hit the net. And they're going to say Maddie Weber hit the net. It looked like almost both players hit the net. But in the end, they give the favor to Blazers, and it is now 23 to nine, Pirates. And Linda Lee serve short. Is short. Net, so it's 24 to nine, and one more point, Met will win this first set. Now let's see if Angelina Hassel can end this one. Excuse me, now Victoria Condolas. Let's see if she can end this one, or she subs in for Angelina Hassel. And with a danger server like Victoria Condulis here, I wouldn't be shocked if she ends up right here. As this one falls in Great Neck's favor. And Great Neck North finally breaks the double digits as Pirates still lead 24 to 10. And now serving for the Blazers is number four, Mia Rios, a freshman right side and outside hitter. 
as that one and just Mia's goes got over. a beaut. Nice shot by Rios. That one just slid right over. Rios with an excellent float serve, almost a bullet serve. Perfect serve from Rios. 24 to 11. Here comes Rios with another serve. Nice job there. Nice, nice job there by Begum. Mia Rios so far proving to be the best server for the Blazers right now. Only a freshman too. Comes Rios. Rios slipped on that Morris. one. Weber, Clark, we're gonna end it. Lee. No double touch call there, a little curious by that one. Here goes Metton, Clark. Over that Clark one, ends the it. Riley senior Clark ends the first night on senior night. Riley Clark with number three, and first set goes to the Pirates. Riley Clark with a nice, nice hit there to Julia Hyman. Unable to play it, ends the first set of senior night. Agreed, Tom. All the seniors getting in on it. Sean, you know, a great, great job there by, you know, Mepham in the first set. And, you know, that's what we're going to see, uh, you know, a lot. A great time now to show people about our BNB broadcasting channel. The midweek update is back and better than ever. This week, join BNB Sammy Rooney and Maya Stone for the annual Student Television Network Fall Challenge episode of Midweek Update. Each year, BNB students join the Fall Challenge where they have six days to create a news feature. Check out the results on this week's Midweek Update, only on BNB. And now, I am being joined by Tyler Steinberg, replacing Tom Morrow for the second set. Tyler, how are you doing? Doing great today. Uh, you know, we're watching a great volleyball game, just looking to have fun and uh, hoping for a great game. Definitely, Tower. And you've seen what's happened in this game so far. What is your analysis on it so far from yeah. both teams? Yeah, uh, Mepham's just been dominating on just about every side of the ball. The, the most important thing for them so far has really just been that first pass. Every time that, you know, you've seen a good serve come over, Mepham has done a great job to respond, and that has just led to amazing hits back to back to back. And, and that's really a big reason why Mepham kind of took that set away. Absolutely, Tyler. And so far, what is your most important thing you've seen from Mepham so far? From Mepham, yeah, uh, you know, we've seen, a, again, a lot of great passes. They have been able to respond from every serve, and the sets have been nearly perfect, and they've had a lot of kills for that first set. A huge reason why they were able to win by that big of a deficit. Agreed there, Tyler. And as we're going to look at our screen, the ending play of where Riley Clark slammed it, and the Blazers cannot return it. All three seniors so far for the Mepham Pirates on senior night have been incredible in the front row. And honestly, the Blazers do have to step it up on the server, Steve, the serving, the kills, almost everything when it comes to the spectrum of volleyball. And how do you think the Blazers can otherwise step it up from the things I said? Yeah, um, you know, the Blazers, they just got to stick to the fundamentals. They got to be able to land those first passes, be able, you know, the, I mean, the sets have been pretty well for the most part, but it's really just that first and that third, uh, that first pass and that third hit. They got to be able to start capitalizing because you're not going to beat an amazing Mepham team by, the, by just trying to get it over and keep hitting free balls. Great there, Tyler. And with 30 seconds left before the start of the second set, we're going to see the Pirates and the Blazers go to set number two after the Pirates won set number one. 25 to 11 and in this set same seniors are all starting and going with a similar starting lineup except Riley Palmer will start this one for the Mepa Pirates and the Blazers will go with the same starting lineup. If it ain't broke don't fix it Sean. I mean Mepa played phenomenal no reason to make too many changes and that's exactly what Coach Wilderman has done. Absolutely and Coach Wilderman is very committed when it comes to senior night to give the seniors their best game of the season and he's kept his promise and has kept all three in so far for the whole remainder of this game and like he did last year with his all of his five six seniors he played them the whole game nearly and they all got playing time but this year with Tom only having three seniors that gives them all the playing time and all three seniors have deserved to be on that court yeah, I mean, they, they all three of them have just played amazing. I, I, every time the ball has been set, there's just been at least an you know, amazing hit. We've been getting kills all over the place, and they have just made a huge impact. Shows that veteranship that the Mepham Pirates kind of need for them, and it, that's a huge reason why the Mepham Pirates are as, as good of a team as they are. Absolutely agree with you. And as we look at the Mepham Pirates roster, that back row and front row are both seriously dangerous. You have center Madison Weber, who is playing phenomenal defense, phenomenal setting. Will never get called for a double touch. Perfect footwork, and she's gonna start off serving for us the set. 
Yeah, I mean, I would not be shocked if Madison just made a huge impact in this game. She had a lot of great sets that first game. Found kind of those holes once in a while when it wasn't the perfect pass to just kind of tip it over the net. She made a huge impact. And for this set as well, Victoria Kondula what? puts back on her libero jersey ice as the first one. She wore the four, four jersey as a defense specialist. Lover starts over. The boys just start to set it up. I'm, I'm isoling. They said three. And Borkwood goes up. And Borkwood slams it down. Uh, that's exactly what I was talking about. Nothing up front is just a leap. They're amazing at blocking. They're amazing at getting those hits that they need, and it's almost impossible to return. Agree with you, Kyman had a little carry there. Weber with a nice serve, and that's an ace for Madison Weber. Madison Weber with one of the nicest serves as a volleyball player I've ever seen, really. A hard float is always the best serve. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've, seen, you've definitely seen a little bit more serves than I have, but I mean, that's an amazing <laughs> serve. Weber. Well, maybe we jinxed it a little yeah, bit, Tyler. Yeah, exactly what I was thinking. The commentator jinx. Madison Weber comes up a little short on that one. And Kaiman, the center, is going to get subbed out for number 28, Leah Chanel. That's the right side. Lee with serve. Alana Morse with a good receive. They get it to Palmer. The Blazers receive it, and they get up. And a great dig from Alana Morse. And Emily O'Sullivan comes back with an answer. Mepham overpasses, so does the Blazers. Alana with a back set. O'Sullivan finds the open spot with a tip. That whole play does not happen if Morse doesn't make that amazing dig. Agreed, the Blazers, no coverage there on the 10 foot line, leads to an Emily O'Sullivan. Beautiful tip, extremely smart play. And now we have Emily O'Sullivan sub out for now defensive specialist Sarah Moyo, who is, is taking Victoria Condolis' jersey ISO, from the first set to be the defensive specialist. ISO 16 Moyo serve. Nice float. Blazers will set it up, go outside. And Morse with another nice dig. Riley Clark, that's number four for the senior. Riley Clark leading the team in kills so far tonight, and it's just proving why she deserves to be on that court. Houston, I mean, Riley Clark has been all over the place in that front row. She's had some amazing hits, and you just look at one right there. Again, an amazing dig by Morse, making a great play, good set by Weber, and that's why Muffin has a forward three. Blazers are going to hit that back. Moyo plays it. And a nice hit from Lauren Borkland, the senior. Lauren Borkland, like we said earlier, coming out of the Farmingdale State, State College Volleyball, like is one previously. of the best, not if, one of the top five best players from middle hitter spot in all of Nassau County. Okay, you said camera three. Blazers hit that one into the net. Sorry. Christina Zui. Blazers got to start communicating a little better. The communication has not been the perfect, not been great in that back row, and they got to start communicating a little better. Great Sarah Moyo with a nice serve. They're going to get us to the right side. Moyo with a nice dig. Weber's going to push it out a little tight. And sets a little tight from Weber there. Clark couldn't do too much with it, and the Blazers are going to get that point. Blazers got to start get going if they want to get back in this game. This Mepham team is elite, and the Blazers cannot afford to fall behind anymore. They got to start getting these serves over, making some big, uh, big plays for them to get back in. Agreed there, Tyler. Now here comes the Blazers, probably best serve today. Mia Rios, the freshman. Morse with another nice receive. Palmer will save it. And Borkland's going to miss that one. The Pirates going to have two straight unanswered points. Good play up front there for the Blazers. Just a perfect, it was not the best pass. But a good tip right over the Mepham front line and uh, Blaze starting to make some plays. Rios with the hammer of the serve. Great play by the Blazers, they're gonna set it up. And Borkland's got 61! Uh, just uh, an unbelievable block. It's almost like we see this every other set. I mean, Borkland is just amazing, she gets up there and uh, with a huge block from the Pirates. And when we think of a block when it comes to volleyball, it's almost like it ends the play. And Every time Borkland blocks, the play is over. It's a nice set. And the boys just got to hit that one out. Number 24, Captain Clara Kamali got a little on top of it. And that's the one's going to go sailing out. And Lauren Borkland, the middle hitter and middle blocker, will come up to serve. Borkland with a nice float. It's a nice set by the Blazers. It's good coverage by Weber. Clark falling back, still adjusts. And Blazers with the miscommunication there. 
something that you cannot afford if you're the Blazers. They've fallen uh, behind a lot today just because of communication. They haven't really been calling it too much, getting another player's way, and that's a huge reason why they're behind. Three, Bork went their second serve. Bork went almost dropped in that serve. Not saying theoretically dropping, but this float ball just dropped. That could have been a really nice ace for the Blazers to play that well. Bork went switching up sides after that nice point. It's another nice serve. And a lot of Morse. The senior, all the seniors are showing up tonight. Yeah, I mean, Morse again. I mean, she's, been made, she's made some huge digs so far this game, playing great now up front with a huge tip there. Borkland serve, when the ball goes over, it's almost like it's dropping. It's excellent serve. Borkland now a nice dig. They're gonna give it to Clark, and there's number five. Number five for Riley Clark. Uh, this map in front row line is just unbelievable. Just about every single player on this team, I feel like, can just hit that ball and make a huge play. The kills are just adding up now for the Pirates. Great, Borkland goes back to the opposite side. Puts a little top spin on it. And Borkland's got an ace. And the Blazers yet to come up with an answer to Lauren Borkland's streak. Once Lauren Borkland had the float going, they started figuring it out. She puts a top spin on it and gets her first ace. More top spin. It's a nice ball. And Weber had good coverage, but better tip, better placement. And that one's going to go to the Blazers. Blazers have to use this momentum now. They finally get that point, get the ball back. They got to start building up something if they want to come back. Definitely agree with you, Tyler. Rachel Bagman with the serve. Clark receives. And Palmer slams it down. That's going to come back to the Pirates. They're going to fight that out. And Matt Palmer with miscommunication on a, on, on a just bad play overall for the Pirates. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a miscommunication. It happens. That's, that's, there hasn't been too much of that so far this game. They're going to look to rebound from that bad play. A great tower. The Pirates look to bounce back off that one. Overpass. And Blazers just could not get that one over. And now the Pirates are going to get it back. Riley Palmer, the junior, is going to go up to serve. One of the elite servers on this team. And now this dangerous front run for the Pirates is now in place. Borkman with a nice dig. It goes over, though. Overpass. It's a nice block from Morse. Morse has made a huge impact. That's, I believe, her second block in the past, like, five points. She's played amazing. She's been all over the place, offensively and defensively. Great play there for the Pirates. A great there, Tyler Riley Palmer. Nice float serve, almost a dart. And boys are going to give it over. Borkman with a beautiful dig. Get her up to Clark. And there's a double touch. Double touch from Linda Lee, the junior saw, the junior setter, excuse me. And Riley Palmer's streak still continues. Pirates leading 16 to 5. Palmer serve perfectly placed. And the Blazers give it back to the Pirates. And Morse has a corner kill. At this point, I mean, I think this map in front line is just cheating at this point. I mean, this is unbelievable. They're playing, they're making every smart play, whether it's been offensively or defensively. Coach Nashry's going to call a timeout to figure things out. While the dangerous map on front line and back line right now continue their dominance. As you see the replay with Alana Morse's kill to the corner. Alana Morse. And like we said, mentioned earlier, all of the other seniors are just showing up today. Yeah, I mean, Alana Morris has done a huge job. Uh, she's done a great job this game. She's really just been all over. She's another stud athlete that's been going for a ride for softball to Hofstra. She's been playing uh, middle for the Mepham Pirates, and as we've seen, I mean, she's made a huge impact with both blocks and kills a ton this game so far. But she's, she's really is one of the best players on this team when you look at it. She's elite offensively and defensively, and she's shown that this game. Definitely committed for D1 softball at Hofstra University since eighth grade. I've, that's not normal. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's athletic. That's, that's just crazy. That's what you call a stud athlete right there for sure. I mean, she. And she, that's called commitment too. Imagine you have, she's a multi-sport athlete, has basketball, volleyball, softball, all three sports in one school year. I can't imagine that. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I can agree with you there. I, that's her. extremely <laughs> hard, and the fact that she plays at a high level for every sport that she does play is just amazing. 
And that buzzer lasted a little longer than it should have been, but eh, we'll ignore that. 17 to five Pirates, Palmer still serving. Blazers with a nice recovery there. Palmer gets back on defense. Weber gives it to Clark. It's a nice dig from the Blazers. Nice dig from Hyman. Moyo with a nice play as the specialist. Miscommunication for the Pirates, but they figure it out. Blazers will send it over. Working with a nice dig. This could be a setup for the middle, it is. And Morse just gets on top of that. And that one goes sailing out. Maybe put a little too much power on that. For the Blazers, Julian Hyman, is, uh, Julie Hyman has been just one of the huge bright, blight, uh, excuse me, bright spots for the Blazers. She's done a great job. She's had a couple digs this game. Great, and Quinn Schroeder just subs in for Riley Palmer for the back row. Palmer gives it to Morse on a trouble ball. They're gonna give it to outside. And there's the, one, possibly one of the first kills for the Blazers today. Captain Clark Kamali, one of the leaders on this team, a junior, is has shown up tonight for the Blazers. One of the Blazers' hardest workers and best leaders on the court and off the court as well. And there's an ace from the Blazers, showing some momentum possibly here. That was number 28, Leah Schnatz, junior and right side hitter. If the Blazers want to come back in this game, they have to be able to execute these serves. They've been a very good serving team, but they got to start building some momentum. Absolutely, and Schnatz hits that one into the net right near the antenna. And now Angelina Hassel will sub in for the front row for Sarah Moyo. Hassel will take the right side spot. And senior Riley Clark will go up to serve. Sends it over, puts the power on that one. Lee gets up, nice hit. Weber with a nice spot. And Morris gets up. A little tight of a set. Good coverage from Schroeder. Negative call over the net on the Blazers and that one's for the Pirates. A little frustration there shown by the Blazers. They made some great plays there. They were, they were finally on that offensive attack again. They were starting to get these tips over. Just a little bit of an unlucky play, barely touching the net there. Reed Agajeni uh, goes over the net on that one. Clark, another bullet of a serve. Lee outside. Lee just comes up a little short on that one. And the Pirates now lead 20 today in the second set. Again, I mean, I feel like the story of this game has really just been that Mepham front row. They have made both amazing plays offensively and defensively. The kills have been unbelievable. Blazers have been running all over the place to try to pick these up. And the defense, I mean, they're amazing with the block so far this game. Captain Crystal Segovia, excuse me, subs up for freshman Mia Rios. And Lee's pass goes out, and Riley Clark's got her first ace of the game. Riley Clark really showing up today on senior night. Yeah, I mean, we've called her name a lot. She has been all over the place. She has an amazing serve. She's had some huge kills so far from the Mountain Pirates and with some great block. Great there, Clark. Clark with another nice serve. That ball just moves everywhere. And the boys is more miscommunication. Couldn't kind of fix that out. Another point for the Pirates, and Riley Clark's serving streak continues. And as you can just see on this replay right here, more, the, one of the earlier pass rallies. Anyways, though, Riley Clark gets an, another ace during her amazing serving streak. 23-8 now, Pirates. This Muffin Pirates serve has been unbelievable so far this game. They just have perfect control in their serves, can have that difference between the top spin and the back spin. Great job so far. Agreed. Clark with another ace. Two in a row now. 24 to eight Pirates. And the Pirates look to end it right here in the second set. Pirates offense and defense have been great. They've played a great two-way game. Clark steps into it. And Clark's got her best serve out of that whole streak. At the tip. And coverage was not there, unfortunately. Weber and Morris went up for the double block, and Quinn Schroeder cannot get there. The Blazers gotta start getting something going. I mean, you never know. It's not over till it's over. Some good serves, and maybe we could see a Blazers rally. Great there, Tyler. Serves over for the Blazers. Clark hits her chest, but Pirates send it over. Overpass. Amazing play by Borkwin. But 
just goes near the referee stand, and that one will be called out. And the Pirates still lead 24 to 10. The Blazers have reached double digits. And sure. coming up to serve now is number 24 for the Blazers, Captain Clara Kamali. So Julian Hyman has been a huge impact for the Blazers. I agree with you there. She has been the backbone of this defense. And as you're putting on display right now, she has been the backbone. But that one goes to the Pirates. Win the set 25 to 10. Two nothing now, Pirates. And Tyler, thank you for joining me on the broadcast. Pleasure having you with me. And we're gonna give Tom Morrow back the mic. Passing channel, b, b Morning Announcements. If it's Friday, it must be the b, b Morning Announcements. Tune in every Friday for the latest about what is going on in and around the MEPM community. This week, join me and Haley Hepworth with the announcements. Matt Mano has the week in MEPM sports. Akeem and Charles has a vocabulary lesson along with the weather. And Hannah Broxmeyer sits down with senior class president Anthony Scotto in around campus. This week on the b, b Morning Announcements, tomorrow morning. And now back with me on the mic is Tom Morrow. Tom, how do you do, sir? Hey, doing, Sean. You nice know, uh, a quick set there. You know, uh, Mep Mep him right away with it, obviously. You know, you saw a powerhouse. You know, senior Riley Clark destroying the night. All, all three seniors are. You know, they're playing their hearts out. You know, last last year. You know, they're they're all having having a night. Great. Now you're looking at the screen. Clark's beautiful serving streak, and that was just one of four <laughs> aces during that streak, and. The Blazers have not had an answer for Riley Clark at all this game. And all, like you just mentioned earlier, all the seniors have showed, and they continue to show, while the Blazers have not had an answer yet. That's right, Sean. You know, uh, you know, as we mentioned, you know, big night. Sean, you know, we're going to go a little deeper into this, and we're going to take a look at, you know, the standings here. You know, because I keep mentioning it, and it's a very pivotal game. You know, we take a look at the standings. Valley Stream North, 10-1, you know, up, up at the top, right there, you know, 11 and 0. Um, they clinched the conference. You know, Metton's 9 and 2. You know, they're 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 standing right right there with Valley Stream as they're 10 and 1. And uh, you know, they're they're right up there. A, a win today could definitely definitely put them up there. Or Valley Stream North loses. Valley Stream North does have one loss actually, but that is, I believe, not an in-conference loss. And anyways. Doesn't matter though, the Valley Stream North. The Valley Stream North Spartans have still clinched the conference this year so far. And honestly, they are the team to beat when it comes to this conference. Unfortunately, Mepham does not have any other games with them this year. But as you look towards the Mepham Rasha going to the third set, you can see on the court there is no white jerseys. It's the first time the Pirates this year have not worn the Libero jersey. And Usually the two liberos for the Mepa Pirates are Victoria Condolis and Sarah Moyo. And this game, Coach Wildeman tried to see if he could change things up and make Victoria Condolis and Sarah Moyo both defensive specialists. But as you saw in that second set earlier, Sarah Moyo was a libero. And libero usually being the strongest passer you have on the court. Not usually one of the best hitters, but Sarah Moyo and Victoria Condolis have proven this season that they're both very capable of being starting hitters, and they're yet both amazing passers when it comes to being in the back row. That's right, Sean, you know, and we even take a look at, you know, this underclassman for Mepham, you know, take a look at Emilio Sullivan, top 20, 19th in the county for kills, 112. You know, you take a look at Victoria Condolis, top 15 for Dick, seventh in the county, 210. You know, this, this underclassman for Mepham is really stepping up this year. Agreed, and now as we get back into this one, the Blazers serve. Lee to Weber, and that one goes over. It's right there, Lee. Beckham blocked at the net, and Great Neck's not able Borkland's to recover. Borkland's got number 62. Moving up in the rankings, already third in the county in blocks, just getting that value even higher. Uh, it's one nothing Mepham here in the third set at Mepham High School. And the team's favorite player, Casey McGovern, one of the clowns, as Tom Wildeman calls it on this team, comes in to serve. McGovern, nice job there, nice serve as that one just goes over. Yeah, Tom McGovern just stuffed it in, into it way too late, and now the Blazers are going to make a substitution and bring back in number 24 from the Blazers, Captain Clark Kamali for the front row. So it's 1-1. 
as a serve. Morris hit over quickly by Mepham. Weber throwing the man on system, but just couldn't. Nice diving stop. Great shot by Morse. A huge play, and the momentum switch right there, definitely. Riley Clark is just adding onto the kill count non-stop. Amazing plays by Riley Clark today, and by all the seniors, and now you get to see one of the most dangerous servers on the team so far in Lauren Borklin. Comes Borklin, and that one goes out, so it's two to two. Jinx her a little bit there, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Borkland Sean. had that dominant serve. Sorry, Borkland had that dominant, <laughs> dominant serving streak in set number two. But start off this one just short. Clark, Morris, Clark's gonna hit it over. As that one's gonna go towards Great Neck. So I think this might be Great Neck's first lead of any set here. It is 100. percent And so far, just silly errors from the Pirates. Two missed serves and a double touch. They the can bounce. Back. My apologies, Sean. The other, other, other lead was the one nothing lead that Great Neck took in the first set. Otherwise. They got it back here. BMB's Lily Epes had a nice hit there. As there's Weber. Clark slams that one. And that goes out. So it's 4-2. to two, And this is Great Neck's biggest lead. Weber set a little off the net. I don't know if Clark was ready for that. Communication does have to step up for the Pirates, though. They are losing right now 4-2. to two. So that one's very short of the net. It's Begum's serve there. Leads to a point. So it's 4-3. to three. Yeah, toss was a little low, and then the contact was way too low. Rachel Beckham couldn't get that over. And now replacing Lily Eppes is another B&B member in Victoria Caminetti, as her teammates like to call her, Vicky Cams. Caminetti. There's Lee and Schnatz. Caminetti with a save. That's got to go over. Certainly nice does. Nice play by Vicky Cams. A great play by Mepham. Victoria Caminetti with Started a great all by play. Victoria Caminetti. And Porkwin follows behind to get the points for Mepham. So it's 4 4 tied up. Victoria Caminetti following the legacy of her brother who just graduated last year, Rob Caminetti, a former boys varsity volleyball player and a starting middle all conference honorable mention as well. Definitely following the steps there. And Mepham gets the points. So it's 5 to 4 here as Caminetti is going to serve this one away. There's Rios. Lee's got it. Hit over. Morris, Clark. Lee's that one. Nice and play. Lee's by unable the to handle it. So it's six to four after a Met point. And Caminetti's going on a roll right now. Yeah, Caminetti's feeling herself in this third set so far. Caminetti's Caminetti goes. Lee's got it. Hits that one over. Opens right there. Weber follows. Morse. Miscommunication from the Blazers as they have had all of today. And the Pirates take advantage of it. And now leads 7 to 4. Miscommunication killing the Blazers there is. Smetton's trying to run away with this one in the third set and 3 0 the Blazers here. Definitely timing. Caminetti's serving great right now. Now it's hit up. Caminetti. Beautiful pass Weber. from Caminetti. Clark and Clark just it keeps open. adding on. This Mepham's just pouring it on the Blazers right now. Agreed, and Riley Clark is just feasting today at that front of the net and in the back row as well. As the Blazers look a little shot out right now. As Caminetti's going on a roll. Schnatz hits that one over. That one, McGovern tries to save it as she's sliding towards the the broadcast Casey. booth over here. KC goes for that backhand slide. Uh, Trying to backhand the ball. Uh, not too smart volleyball player, but why not? Always worth a try. Absolutely. Here comes Schnatz. Weber. That's S over. Nice set from Weber. Lee, come on. Save. Lee hits that nice one over. That's three. Rendo. Borkwin to Weber to Morse. Lee. Come on, he gets Kamali up. gets up. Said the same thing there, yeah. Sean. Hey, great minds think alike. <laughs> Kamali. Over. One of the longest nice shot there. Weber's the got to hit that one over. Kamali's right there. Hyman. Back to Kamali. Nice volley here from both teams. Morse. We're going to put an end to it. Kamali gets up. 
Clark. Clark with nice a beautiful job. save. And, and that's going to be a nice job there, Mike Metham. A shocking carry call there. I just, I don't know if I got a clear seat of that, but not too sure about that one. So that's going to go great next way, but a nice job by Clark saving that. Riley Clark. That went over. Hyman's right there. Two players right there as well. Blocked by Morse. Morse and Weber up front is a very good blocking duo. McGovern hits that one out as McGovern and Borkman were right there. And as we were just talking about, two blockers in the front. No one blocks the Blazers there. Boyce is going to kill, and they're making this one again, 8 to 7. So it's 8 to 7 now, McGovern. Weber with a nice there. trouble ball there to Morris. Lee, Kamali, one of the captains on this team. That one stays in, and now to go great next. So now we're all tied up at 8 8. First time we've been tied up today. Maybe the Pirates are getting a little confident in themselves. But then again, a lot of unanswered points, a lot of errors and silly mistakes for the Pirates, and they know they have to regroup while the Blazers so far are taking control. That's right. Here comes Schnatz. Morse with the hard powerful, hit. Powerful, powerful hit there from Alana Morris, the senior Morse's, captain. Morris's best hit of the day. When you're a middle hitter, if you hit down the middle, it will get blocked. But when you go side to side, it's going to be a kill. Sean, you, you said it was the best hit of the day, and it came in the best spot of the day. You know, 8-8, uh, eight, eight, and momentum definitely just switched to Metham, and they're going to try to look to run away with this one. And here comes You know, one. you need that momentum boost in that situation. Absolutely. And Riley Clark, one of the danger servers today, is going up to serve. There's Kyman, over by Lee. Weber with the tip. Weber. Good coverage from the Kymen. Blazers. Goes back to Kamali, short of the net. 10 to 8, Mepham. Like we said earlier, and like I'll still say now, the Blazers, I don't think, have talked once. <laughs> Mid play, I'm being really serious when I say that. And Riley Clark's taking advantage of that back row. Can we have that uh, back up? Comes Clark. Yeah. A line drive serve, and, and that gets Ace from point. Clark, her first of the streak. One 11 to 8. Too many streaks. It's 11 to 8 now. Another dumb volleyball question that I ought to know. Uh, how many uh, periods are there in this? I think it's um, And three. here comes Clark. Okay. Unless they're doing two matches. Hyman. <laughs> there, Hyman gets that it back. That beautiful pass, sky high, and Clark's got an overpass. It's enough for a three. Kamali to Kaiman. Back to Kamali. Caminetti. <laughs> Borkwin. O'Sullivan short of the net. O'Sullivan, like we mentioned earlier, is one of the best hitters in all of the county, and I wouldn't be shocked she gets all county this year, and she's showing it. Here comes O'Sullivan. As that goes over, and Metton's going to get the point as that one goes out. That one's out, and Coach Nashi, I don't think, liked that call at all. And that might have been in, but line judge and who we interviewed earlier in the broadcast, Michaela Dalby, ninth grader, doing the lines. As that one goes out of bounds, Great Neck will get the point. Remember when I said the Blazers weren't communicating? Maybe the first time they communicated, and at the right time. And here comes Hyman. As that one goes over. And Lee O'Sullivan. Here comes O'Sullivan. Good spot. Lee's there. Kyman's right there. And there goes over by Rios. Nice play by Morse. And Weber they're gonna give it goes to O'Sullivan. Slams that one over. Unplayable. That one will go out of bounds. And now it's adding on for Mepham, and it's 13 to 10. Emily O'Sullivan showing why she's top 25 in the county and kills is still proving and now coming into the game for Victoria Caminetti is B and B to B and B Lily Epes. Weber, Hyman, Cannon, no double touch call there. A little shocking there. Weber, Yepes, lays that and one Lily's over. Lily's got a kill. The first B and B kill, if you will, of the day. Madison Weber, one of the better elite servers on this Bepa Pirates team. Kyman. 
And that one's going to barely go over. Nice job there from the Blazers. Weber with a beautiful set. O'Sullivan with a powerful hit. Madison Weber feeling herself in this third set. Has set extremely well whenever the ball has touched her hands. And here comes Weber as Memphis leading 15 to 10. Borkwin looking Borkwin to get another block. another block. Bork with the number 62, but usually a block ends the play, and that's one of the first blocks I may have ever seen in my whole volleyball career. And watching volleyball, Blazers, that has not ended the play. Sean Blazers are keeping up with Metman in this set. You know, Metman's got a lot of their second string players in this set, and you know, Blazers are uh, keeping up with them. Absolutely, Weber with a beautiful play. Samuel O'Sullivan. Looks like a lot of their first strings coming back in now. So with power hit, nice job by Great Neck. That gets denied. And looks like this is going to go. I believe both went in the net, but the refs are going to discuss it, and they will replay it. Both did go in the net at the same time, and the referees could not come to a conclusion, as neither could have I, and they'll Hard replay this there. point. Morris, Weber, going to a Sullivan. That's hit cross court. Lee could not handle it, so it's 16 to 11. I mean, Sullivan finding the corners and it's just showing again how dominant she can be. And now Emily serving for, I believe, the first time today as she may be the most dangerous server on the Pirates team. Taking it easy on a little float. That goes Weber. Handle Yepes. Lee. Short of the net. So it's 17 to 11 now. And the Pirates were down, and now they're back on top. 17 11, like you just said, Tom. And Emily O'Sullivan, like I did mention earlier, one of the better hitters and possibly an all county player. Schnatz could not get it, so it's 18 to 11 now as Metton's pouring it on. Great there, Tom. The Pirates are just. Showing the Blazers who they are and why they are earned a second place spot in the conference. And they haven't clinched their spot in the conference yet, though, at second place. They could go down to third place and that could affect their playoff seating. So they do need to beat Plain Edge in their next week. I believe, yes, next week. They do need to come up strong and beat Plain Edge. Or if Plain Edge even loses, the Pirates will clinch that second place spot. Absolutely. That goes over. Lee, Schnatz could not get it over. Schnatz just did not have a great approach there. The swing was good, but the approach was just not there in time. And the Blazers will now sub out Rios for number 17, Captain Crystal Segovia, the only senior on the team, as a matter of fact. Comes Borkman for a short serve. Great Neck will get that. No, 19-13. Yes, 19-13. 19-13, Tom, definitely. And now the Blazers possibly could gain momentum here. Yepes, Weber, back to Yepes. Big power for hit there. Lee, that's got to go up and that's got to go over. And that was forehead, Tom. Four. That was four. It's a little too much there. A little. <laughs> it's kind of illegal, Tom. Yeah, you know you know better than me, Sean. I, I mean, you've watched some volleyball for a few years now, right? I've watched it. You play it, man. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you got a point. So it's 20 to 13, Epham. Joey Caminetti, B and B zone. Kamali, short in the net, so it's 21 13, and four points away from Met winning the set and Met winning the game. Yeah, Tom, Pirates showing the Blazers who are a rebuilding team and came out strong in the set actually, are just showing them why they are the second place team. That goes back in, that goes out of bounds. And Casey McGovern with a great play and all laughs and jokes on the Memphis Pirates side. And the Blazers, you know, look for some extra points, some bonus points almost. 22-13 and Hyman, Kamali, that's Three hits and won't go over. So now it's 23 13. Come on, he's going to send that one out. And Victoria Caminetti will keep on serving for the Pirates with two more to go. 
It's going on a roll here, and Caminetti serve goes over. Schnatz right there. That goes over by Kamali. Caminetti's right there. Goes over. Two, two people at the line, and Borkman's unable to get it. So it's 23 to 14 after a diving Borkman unsuccessful attempt. The Blazers stopping that long streak from Caminetti, and now the Blazers will serve. Oh, here comes Schnatz. Clark. That goes over McGovern. As it's going to go out of bounds, 24 to 14. And Riley Clark, who is at the end of the day BNB's player of the game, who just had one of the best games I've seen from any female player on the Beppham Girls volleyball team. Having herself a day as she serves this one away. And, and Riley Clark and Senior Knight with an ace. Couldn't have done it better there, Sean. And as you see on your screen, number 18, Riley Clark, is your BNB player of the game. Riley showed up tonight on senior night. Pirates knew they wanted a winner for the seniors, and Riley had a major part in that. That's right, Sean. You know, uh, all three seniors really showed up to play today. They got the start, and, uh, you know, they, they, really did, they really did what they needed to do. You know, all of Mepham volleyball team came into play, and they got the 3-0 sweep. Agreed, and now if you look on the corner as well, the seniors are all picking up their gift bags as they do every senior night. And you can see a similar sort of setup on senior night next Tuesday for Mepham's next broadcast, which will be boys volleyball, where you'll see me on the court uh, taking on the Levittown District Generals, otherwise, otherwise known as MacArthur. And this game just showed why Mepham was on top. And now we gotta toss it to Giseth with our player of the game, Riley Clark. Hi, um, hi my name is Josef Chavaria, and I'm here with Riley Clark, the big player, the big winner of our game today. What goes on your mind when you guys play? Um, today was our senior day, so I just wanted to work hard to get all the seniors in the game and so we could stay in the whole game and just have fun. One of our last games ever, so. How do you and your players and your teammates contribute to the court? Um, we all really work hard in practice and we all have such like close friendships outside of volleyball so that really helps us on the court. Do you guys have any tips that you guys for playing volleyball? Um, honestly, I think the best plays are just like the random plays that happen. It doesn't always have to be bump set spike. Just have fun. Okay, thank you and good job on tonight. Back to you guys at the booth. So that'll do it. Thank you, Josette. And that'll do it from Mepham High School. Three to nothing Mep beats Green Neck North. For BNB, I'm Tom Morrow. I'm Sean McCormick. And we'll see you all next week when we have the next BNB game of the week.